Hi, my name is Marie Dumont, and I am the founder of the Mid-Florida Bigfoot Research Group, and you're listening to the Bigfoot Club Podcast. Hey guys, please go to our website at www.bigfootclubpodcast.com. Check out our merch and all episodes. Also, please look for our social media at Twitter, Facebook, Instagram at Bigfoot Club One. That's Bigfoot Club Number One. Also, check out Matt Knapp's Bigfoot Crossroads on YouTube. Hey, everybody. Bigfoot Club, Season 5, Episode 5. This is your co-host, Stephen Dominguez, and I'm with the actual badass host. Whatever. My uncle. <laughs> Whatever. What's What's your name? <laughs> Uh, Bigfoot Bob. Big no, I'm just kidding. Robert Dominguez. Robert Dominguez. How are you, man? I'm good. You see how I switch from uh, yeah. to that now? Yeah, see, yeah. That's, see, it's therapeutic. It's very good. I have like some type of uh, stomach bug that uh, yeah knocked knocked me down on the toilet. <laughs> so we're we were like debating where we we're going to do this show, but I, I, I was I, like, I, all I have to do is just sit down and talk. That's all I got to do. <laughs> I'm not lifting anything, cleaning anything, picking anything up. <laughs> yeah. I, I'll be fine. You're all like, I don't yeah. know, man. Uh, but no, I got I got some Gatorade. You got me some Gatorade. Yeah, so you, I'm, I'm good, good, man. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, yeah. Have you have you been streaming this week at all? I have not. Uh, I was supposed to stream yesterday, but I didn't feel good either at that time. So yeah, that's dumb. I've been posting your your Twitch on uh, the the Bigfoot Club like every all like last couple of weeks, mm-hmm. and just trying to build you up a little bit. So been trying to do that so yeah um i'm i'm pretty excited for today for, to, for tonight yeah yeah tonight we were we were supposed to have this guest in december mm-hmm. but remember uh grandma got sick yep. and we had to postpone on this gentleman and another guest so we had to end last season abruptly mm-hmm. and so i'm super excited to welcome back into the club brett carson's haunted medium brett how are you brother Hey, good to good to be on with you guys. Yes. Hey, 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 Steve. It sounds like it sounds like there's a weird echo with you. Really? Are you like? Are you in a? Are you in a uh, tiled room? No. Perhaps. No. Okay. No. We're okay. we're we're, uh, we're uh, in the same uh, room. I was just going for the. Are you in a bathroom kind of? <laughs> <situation>? <laughs> I should be just to be on the safe oh, side. <laughs> Um, Brett, yeah, because awesome. uh, my wife would not like uh, the outcome of whatever happens on the couch here. Yeah. Uh, no, we're actually doing uh, something different here. Like I think the last time we spoke with you, we were at uh, my uncle's uh, house and we were around uh, your table. Right, right. And now we we were still doing that over my place, and we have this L, this sectional couch that's yeah. real comfortable. And I was like, "Why don't we just do it like Michael Rosenbaum on?" Instagram? Yeah, we used to we used to do it on like on the on the dining room table, Brett, and it was like kind of uncomfortable because the, chair, the chairs <laughs> the chairs are not comfortable at all. So yeah, so, so we we yeah. finally opted. I go, "Let's do it on the couch." And, so. and we we have not gone back. It's very comfortable. Yeah. We we have each our our where we sit. Mm-hmm. Um, we were surrounded by pillows and loves. And, yeah. So uh, last time, last time oh. we had we had Brett on, it was season two, episode forty six. It was the last finale episode of that year. And I, I Brett, I think actually your episode did really, really well. Mm. For oh, a while. cool! Yeah, it was like it was cool. the, it was like the most downloaded. So, um, but I'm excited. On. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm excited about talking back with you. Uh, what's what's been going on with you, man? Since we last talked. Oh man, it's been well. We had COVID, right, and then. Right. Right. No. Um, let's see. What have I been doing? I'm just doing these road trips, doing my paranormal thing. I go out, go out on my motorcycle all by myself and I look for just strange places and I listen to my spirit guides and they kind of direct me where to go. And I, uh, film it all, get lots of EVPs and all of that stuff and put it on YouTube. You know, that's, I, that's I, what I've been doing. I constantly post your stuff on our because I run a, I run a paranormal group on Facebook as well called Haunted. It used to be Pentex, but now it's called Haunted uh, Paraparlor. So every time every time you post a, a video, I post it on there like right away. Oh, so thank you so much. No, no problem because like <clears throat> your your videos are like amazing. You have like amazing areas that you go to. Is this like California and the surrounding states? 
it's where I can get to on my motorcycle. Right. Um, so it's most, it's mostly been the Western States. Um, before I started filming it, I made it all the way up to the Arctic circle wow. on like, on basically like a dirt bike. So that Goodness. was, that was pretty exciting. <laughs> that's, that's, and, then, uh, and I, I got to ask, uh, Brett, is, is it comfortable on a motorcycle? Uh, you know what you, once you get used to it, it's fine. It feels pretty good. Do you, but you, do you do, feel sore after like, I guess like the, I guess a couple uh, times, like or? a, like a long, stretch. a long stretch. There you go. That's what I was looking for. Yeah. You start out and you're like, okay, how far can my gas tank take me? And you're, you're stopping to get gas way more than you need to. Yeah. And then after you get going, you're good for, you know, 150 miles or something at a time. And then you get off at the gas station, you do your thing, you grab a drink or, you know, whatever, walk around and keep going. And um, I ended up getting a new bike, and it's a lot nicer and everything, but I ended up uh, dumping it on my last ride. Mm. Um, I was doing an oil change, and I was going to put it back on the, like, take it off the center stand, Mm-hmm. And I forgot that I had luggage on the other side. And basically, it like I pushed it, and it ended up catapulting me over the bike. Oh. And I'm laying there on the opposite side of the bike, and there's blood. And I look at my finger, and it's all bent all over the place. And I'm just like, okay, well, that's the end of this ride. And uh, it turned out I broke my elbow, so I've been out of commission for six months. Wow. Wow. So you got pins in it right uh, now, Randall? <laughs> I've got I've got a uh, a plate in my elbow, and I swear I keep picturing like the cheap cheap punched metal that they have at like Home Depot or whatever. <laughs> you know, it's like I feel like they didn't file the edges or anything. <laughs> it's just like, come on, guys, dude. <clears throat> oh, but uh, the thing that's crazy about it is. Uh, I was getting I was getting hits on this happening, or not this happening, but I kept getting hits on things, and so I'm hoping that in this next season, because I filmed all of this, and the guides were telling me like, oh, don't you know you don't want to ride today, <laughs> stay here, and I'm like, oh, okay, I'll just stay here and do errands, and I was like mis- misunderstanding what they're saying every chance. And, like, auto parts stores kept, like, pinging for me. Like, I was getting psychic hits. Every time I'd see it, I'd be like, what is this about? Like, is my bike going to break down? Right. So I was missing the point the whole time. But they kept they kept telling me, like, no, you don't want to do this. Like, mm-hmm. stay here. So, um, so there is some predestination. I mean, they can see the future. Like, that's totally... A real thing they can see the future and they tried to keep me from messing up but you know i'm just like ah i'm missing what you're saying (laughs) and so i kept kept doing it so i'm hoping we get evidence of them telling me this stuff or me actually saying stuff out loud so i mean i was telling my wife all the time i'm like oh yeah this is what they said and all that but it didn't make it to film probably i was gonna i was gonna ask you brad is um are these are these spared guys? Are these are these relatives of yours, or um, are they, no. they just they just people that just choose you, or or do you choose them? Uh, I don't know how it works. I do know, or this is my belief, because a lot of this stuff, you you know, we're we're just going on our own experiences and all of that stuff. But spirit guides, I feel, are not. Um, they aren't relatives of yours. Okay. Um, our relatives and stuff might show up and like try to guide us and stuff like that. But I think we've got dedicated folks on the other side that are looking out for us, like since before we were born. Okay. And I think they stay with us and guide us and they might switch out. They might call in an expert or something to take over for certain things. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's these, these spirits or beings um, that, have known us since before we were born and they'll be there after we die. How many guides do you have? Do you know, <clears throat> um, 
Well, I think a lot of people have one or maybe two or something like that, and they might switch out and all that stuff. Um, I think I think I'm I'm high risk. <laughs> I'm yeah. I'm uh, a lot to handle, so I've got a lot of guides at one time, and I don't know. Um, I don't know exactly who they are anymore. Um, for a while, like when I was like early on in my development, I knew my guides. I knew them specifically. I knew their names, all of this stuff. And just, they've, they've swapped in and out, um, so much that I just kind of, I'll recognize voices. I'll recognize, um, attitudes or kind of mannerisms and stuff like that. But, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, typically I won't. I don't know who my guides are right now. Because I know, I know. Listen, you know, watching your videos on uh, YouTube, that I, I noticed that you don't give out names. That's just something that you don't do, right? Yeah, yeah. They and, just they told me to do, told me not to. So I'll follow their instructions. And how far back did you realize? I mean, how young were you? Did you realize that you had this gift, or do would you, would you call it a gift or a curse or what? I'm just I'm curious. Oh, it's for sure a gift. Okay. I, you know, I feel like there's some scary stuff and there's stuff I don't want to know. And it's a responsibility and all this stuff, but man, it, my, my life is so wide open. There's so much going on all the time. Um, so uh, it's definitely a gift that way. And then, um, when I was a little kid, I had spirits coming to me and this is like maybe, I don't know, six or eight years old or something. I had spirits coming to me and they just scared the crap out of me because I didn't understand what was going on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so they, I guess they backed off a little bit, but I always had ghosts. I always had like things coming to me, weird, weird stuff. Um, like seeing, um, like a woman that looks like she's in a veil, like a wedding veil, or even the, um, kind of like the, the stereotypical ghost with the sheet over its head. Like I saw that in my room and my brother saw it too, because he started screaming. We were in bank bunk beds. He started screaming. This is in the middle of the night. And I look and I see this woman that looks like special effects. (laughs) Um, But she's kind of see through kind of has a wedding veil kind of also like the sheet over her head kind of thing. And she starts going down and I think she's going towards my brother in the lower bunk. And so I race to the foot of my bed and I watch her sink through the floor. She just goes like right through the floor Mm -hmm. and she's gone. And by that time my mom runs in because we're both yelling and uh, like I've had ghosts um, around like since I was little and that, so that like wasn't the beginning of my ghost experiences so I get up, and as soon as mom's there, it's like, it's safe, right? Yeah. Mom protects. And so I start looking around. I'm like, okay, let, we need to go downstairs and see, like, below this room, we need to see if we can find this find this woman, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I take, my, I take the family around looking for this ghost, and we don't see it, but um, my family saw stuff like quite often in this house and um you know like we'd move to other places and we'd still see spirits and stuff it wasn't the same ones right it wasn't the same ones that we're aware of but that was when i was a little kid so i grew up kind of i don't know being open to it and being excited about it but also like if it's hitting me in this like a psychic or mediumship kind of sense where it's like telepathic or whatever, um, that would really scare me. And uh, when I would have these episodes, it was like my whole awareness was not in the physical. Like I was like, like blanking out. It was like the movie. Um, uh, it's with Christopher Walken, the, the Dead Dead Zone. That's mm-hmm. what it was. Mm-hmm. And like you know, he touches somebody's arm, and then he freezes up and his face goes blank and you know he's seeing some sort of premonition or whatever that's what it was like for me as a little kid when a spirit would come and try to talk to me i would be like 
bam, I'm not in the physical world. Like I'm hearing loud noises and hearing the person and I'm seeing the person and I can't see where they are or what the context is, but I can see like, I can see them. Um, and it would happen. It would just go, go for a few seconds and I pop out and, you know, I remember the first times this would happen. I just cried because I was just scared. Um, so I think I just kind of let that go. Um, in high school, I remember reading like playing cards for people, but I never considered myself a psychic or a medium. Mm. Uh, I would still get like weird information <laughs> out of nowhere. Or I would, um, a lot of times, like when I first started driving, I would get the impression like, don't go this route to get home. And, uh, there'd be like a terrible accident or something that I would, um, I would avoid because I'd go around some other way and I'd find out about it later. Wow. You know, so that was me as a little kid. And then, uh, you know, I've always looked for Bigfoot and UFOs and ghosts, you know, I'm obsessed with all this stuff. And so like ghost hunters came out and they were kind of doing, um, paranormal investigations. Let me try to say that again, paranormal <laughs> investigations. And they were doing it kind of scientifically, you know, they were like trying things and seeing if they could recreate things and stuff like that. And so I was like, wow, this is cool. This is what I've been doing. This is awesome. So I started joining groups and whenever somebody had a psychic in the group, I'd be talking to them. And I'm like, Oh, what are you doing? And they would explain what's going on. And so I would just do it, whatever that is. Right. Uh, yeah. So one of the episodes I saw, you were explaining how you see spirits. Uh, it, it could be in physical form. It could be uh, see-through. It could be like a mist. Are you able to decipher which ones are bad? Or is it is it the spirit guides telling you, like, this is a bad one or this is a good one or this one's okay. Uh -huh. yeah. That's a really good question. Uh, you know what? Like when, when you start first start researching this stuff and you're looking at it and, or um, I don't know, I guess all the literature, well, not all the literature, but a lot of literature talks about like, Oh, well, if it's dark, it's, it's, it's bad or it's evil, you know, something mm -hmm. will show up like a shadow and it's, something to be scared of or something's light it's good and all this stuff i haven't really i haven't really seen that um knock on wood i think it's just however they however they can show up mm -hmm. um you know and there there are things that show up and i think they present themselves in scary ways mm -hmm. and um yeah i don't i don't know and then i think they might be able to present themselves as like divine or positive beings also. So it's really hard to tell. Um, you have to trust, trust your gut with it mm -hmm. and like trust their track record. And then also uh, if they're doing anything that is harmful or hurtful to you or anybody else, or if they say anything that's not cool, like ignore them because yeah, they aren't, they aren't good. But Basically, it's it's kind of the way we have to deal with uh, other people. Mm -hmm. You know, you just go with your gut a little bit, and you can't tell if this person's a good person or a bad person. You know. Yeah, because because uh, I always wondered that. Because I mean, I always wondered if the like actual mediums, um, like yourself, like when you see spirits, obviously the people that passed on. Like I always wondered, do you see them as just normal people? Or do you see them of how they possibly like how they died? Like if they burned in you know in a house or something, do you see them as a burned victim? Victim, yeah. Or uh, yeah. Something, you know stuff like that. Like stuff like that is is terrifying because you could be I don't know making a sandwich in the kitchen. All of a sudden you just see a burned victim in in your in your kitchen. You're like oh Jesus, and then it's just, it's talking to you. It's trying to talk to you. Right. Like or it's, it's mumbling something like. Have you ever had an encounter like that where you were just, you know, minding your business, doing your everyday thing, using the restroom? I'm, you know, I'm going to have to send you a picture. There was this thing. Uh, I'm I'm not sure if this was 
a human spirit or something else, but it looked like a burn victim, like a terrible for burn victim. Mm. And it was at one night I was laying in bed and it's in my closet. Like I see it, I see this telepathically. So it's like the same way your memory works. Mm-hmm. Like you can see, you know, if, if it's like, okay, picture Indiana Jones. You mm. can see that in your head, right? Right. Um, so telepathically, that might be how I see how I see a spirit. I might see it like that, but like super clear, like like I just watched the movie, or mm-hmm. you know, it's like stuck in my head, or um, yeah, or or better. <laughs> mm. um, but sometimes it's just that little flash of seeing something like that. But yeah, this I saw this thing, saw this. I'll, I'll just call it. I saw this dude in my closet who was uh, looked like a burn victim, and I actually drew him uh, afterwards. I actually did a drawing, mm-hmm. so I should find that and send it to you guys. Yes, please. Yeah, because uh, um, hmm. yeah, but um, I I think most of the time, if a spirit has like, if they're together, <laughs> if they're mentally clear and all of that stuff. And I just mean, like, um, if you think about think about a ghost or something, you know, all the stories are they have unfinished business and all mm-hmm. of this stuff, like earthbound spirit or a ghost. Mm-hmm. Um, they usually have some mental or emotional issue. Um, and so, you know, it's somebody who's afraid of going to heaven and so or afraid of, like, what's next. You know, afraid to face God. They they weren't pious enough. They didn't go to church. And I've met quite a few spirits like that. And they've been hanging around here trying to make it work and everything. And they just, like, they're, they're supposed to go to heaven. They're supposed to go up. Um, and that's how I, that's, that's what I've heard from my guides. I hear up and they talk of heaven and stuff like that. So that's kind of, those are the words I use. So, um, other people can use whatever words they want, but right. that's how I see it. But um, I, I don't even know where I was going with this. <laughs> but, no, it's okay. I was going to ask, yeah. so with what you just said right there, it, it kind of gives the implication that when that person dies, they have the option. It's, it's still the option to go up. And they yeah, I it. think. And it only it's only once maybe because I'm I'm okay. This is where I'm going with it. I'm going with like how it is with the movie Ghost, where yeah. um, Sam has he, he sees a light. He doesn't go to it because he has unfinished business taking care. I can't believe we're talking about this movie. Molly, yeah, uh, Molly, yeah. and uh, <laughs> and wow, you guys and are the, good. And then the light disappears, and he doesn't yeah. he doesn't see it again until it is resolved. He saves her. And the light comes back, and she's able to see him. Blah blah blah. Sad ending. I still hate that ending. It, it made me realize, like, man, there's no, you can't come back. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, it, it sounds like it, it, like how it's like that. It gives you, you still have the option to, to, I guess, transcend your, your, transcend your, your spirit, uh, your energy, to, your energy, time. and let go. But it's like an option. Like, no, I got unfinished business. Well, what unfinished business do you have? that you can't take care of. Right. You know, so that's scary in a way yeah. because it, it, what, it, you know, I was, I was going to lead into, uh, cause I know, you know, Brett was talking about these people who are just bound by the earth. Brett, do you ever, do you ever get like, I know whenever you're at home and you're ready to go to bed and you're ready to rest, you st- do you still get spirits, you know, like trying to reach out to you or do you tell them, Hey, this is a stopping point. Let me rest. And then I'll talk to you in the morning to do that. My boundaries suck. <laughs> Let me tell you, <laughs> I, I'm not good at that. I don't, I'm not good at shutting down. Um, I've had other mediums talk to me about it. They're like, you don't shut down. Like you need to just shut down. Um, I think it's just that I, I stop paying attention, but I think I, I mostly keep this whatever energetic state going. And um, yeah, I, I've heard it's not good for you and all that stuff, but um, lately, I think my guides are doing a really good job of kind of keeping, keeping spirits away from me at night when I'm trying to, right. trying to sleep. That's good. Um, I think they've, I think they've kind of kept most of them away 
while I'm like trying to heal from my arm and all that stuff. That's good. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, <laughs> you, I, I, you, I, have, I, you have to, sh- you have to shut down and you have to have boundaries. Otherwise uh, yeah. you're just going to lose, like you're just, uh, you're going to run yourself down so, and somehow, somehow I can manage. Um, so I guess, I guess I just keep, keep going. The, these guys, do you think they're like, Really, really big, strong Italian guys. <laughs> so dumb. Like, no, no, no. Sorry, Mr. Mr. Me, Mr. Bash, not, not going to see you tonight. But Mr. Carter is not, not going to talk to you tonight, no. okay? You're going to have to go. You, you got to come back tomorrow. I don't know why they're, they're Chicano all of a sudden now. God, my Italian uh, uh, impressions uh, suck. We, we, we always do impressions all the time, bro. Yeah, all the time, but so. when, when we're put on the spot, it, obviously we, it leads to something else. <laughs> I can try to sound like Christopher Walken and it ends up being like Bradley Cooper. But, but do you do uh, Christopher That's Walken? That's how I do good. it. I, I, it's okay. My, but, my impressions suck, too. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like no. I try to do anything, and it's like, well, that's that's absolutely not even on the same continent as whatever you're trying <laughs> Yeah. Hey, hey, I was gonna ask you what's what's the deal with you in caves? Oh, you know what? I just like I don't know. I just discovered caves, and I'm like, Batman. dude, I can I can just go in this cave like for real. Mm-hmm. Like, there's nobody there's nobody trying to block me from going in this cave. I, I know, but it, it just seems like you're drawn to caves all the time. I think so. I think it's like I see I see a cave or a mine or something like that on a map. Like I find a lot of these places. Uh, just looking at Google Maps. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll look at Google Maps, or I'll actually just be cruising down the road, and there's a sign, and it's like, you know, whatever cave. Do you know, not enter. Cool. Let me let me check it out. Let me go check it out. And you know, it seems it seems super reckless, like me going in caves and stuff by myself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, there are times when I don't go in the cave, where like. I, I stop and I turn the bike around and I'm like, okay, this is not a good idea for me to go down this trail. Yeah. Is that your like, spirit guys telling you that? Or is it your gut feeling like, uh, eh, maybe this is, I, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know which, which one it is. There are definitely times when it is the, my guides that are like, 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 nope, nope, don't do that. This and is not a good route for you. Cause, cause me, I'm, I'm like claustrophobic. I would not yeah. do well in caves. So no. <laughs> I said, nope, turn around and leave. So. Yeah, no, I, I, uh, I, I would be the same way. It's the fear I, of the unknown of what's in the cave. Yeah. Cause you never know. It, it Dude, could, if it's people, that's, that's the worst thing you can yes, find in the yes. cave. Oh yeah. Really. People, snakes, spiders, bears, bears. Yeah. Bigfoot. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't know. The, with the, if if you go if you go with the uh, Dave Politis stuff and yeah. you go with the missing four one one, is it four one one? Yeah, you're right. You got it. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I watch I'm kind of like, is that a is that a is that a Bigfoot UFO kind of crossover thing? Because mm-hmm. like, yeah, that's that's the Bigfoot I don't want to meet. Like, I, I don't want any part of that. No part of uh, that missing four one one stuff. You know, you know, a lot of his stuff. Um, I think on one of the, I think one of the documentaries, he never, he never mentions the word Bigfoot, but it, 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 a lot of the circumstances that the people like lead up to before they start disappearing sounds like Bigfoot stuff to me. <laughs> Did I actually say? Oh that? yeah, yeah. yeah sounds like Bigfoot stuff to me. <laughs> yeah, sorry, but there, there's some of some of his things. Like I've been, I've been following this guy for a while too. And um, I know there's one story where pe- people are, like, looking for this kid or something, and they look on this cliff, and they see, you know, what it sounds like the description is a Bigfoot carrying this kid, mm-hmm. like, up this cliff. And it's like, I mean, that sounds like a Bigfoot to me. <laughs> so um, We did a story, I think it was um, the following season that, that we closed with you, I think it was season three. Uh, this lady, I was telling, what well, she didn't actually come on, but she told me the story, and I, I read it on the show. But uh, she lost her son; I think he was like four or five in Arkansas, and he, he wandered off. And the whole camp, I think she was camping with other people. She didn't know them, but they kind of all kind of gathered together and started helping her look for this for her son. And uh, he, whenever he he came back like an hour later, and he told his mom that he was he was pushed back like guided back by by some talking walking bears 
Wow. And so uh, she told she told me that story, wow. and I was I was amazed by it. And she said that that the, that at the time he was telling her that that the two bears were arguing, and the and the the mama bear was carrying a baby bear. But they, but they walked the whole time, and they were like guiding, like kind of like, you know, had their hands out to guide him, you know, to walk this way, and they and they guided him back to camp. And I thought that was one of the most amazing stories I've ever had. So mm. that's that's pretty interesting stuff. So I know, when the last time we had talked on the show, uh, you had mentioned that you had you, and I, this is the first time I ever actually heard it from a psychic because you know in in the in the Bigfoot community we hear the word mind speak in Bigfoot stuff, yeah, yeah, and we hear it all the time, but I never hear it from an actual psychic or median. And then whenever you talked about it, I was really amazed by it that you said that you kind of connected with a Bigfoot or they had the same energy as fairies, right? You were, you were saying something like that. Oh man, I I wish I wish I could remember because I I. <laughs> I'm I'm so lucky. I have like really pretty insane experiences mm -hmm. quite often. Um I had I had what I think was probably a Bigfoot or something because I've never been this this scared in my life. Mm -hmm. Um up in up in uh Canada outside of Whitehorse, I went I went way way back somewhere to go camping. And I ended up near a lake, and it wasn't, I mean, this isn't, like, way back out in, like, Alaska or Canada, because that's, like, no people for 200 miles or something. But, um, you know, I was on a lake, and I think there were places where people would fish and camp and stuff. But I found this campsite, and I was going to set up, and there was a, uh, a log, a tree stump, tree stump. Like, I get off my bike. I'm, like, ready to set up my tent. I'm like, okay, where am I setting up my tent? You know, where am I going to have a fire, all that stuff. And I look at this tree stump, and there's all of this, like, trash. Like, you know, pull tabs from cans and rubber bands and, you know, pieces of elastic or twisty ties. Like, just weird stuff that, like, we would throw away or whatever. And it's meticulously laid out on this stump. And everything is, like, evenly spaced. And, like, I, it just, like, suddenly I was just, like, something's wrong. Like, this is not, this is, like, not normal. Something's totally wrong. And uh, I started to, like, tune in. And I could feel something looking at me. Something was watching me. Mm -hmm. And I got on my bike. And I got out of there, and I rode, like, I rode for, like, 400 miles or something like that, like, to get away from this area and ended up, like, <laughs> trying, like, sleeping behind a gas station at, you know, 2 o'clock in the morning or something. Yeah. I mean, it was, like, enough to freak me out that I, like, I was gone. I was out of that area. But I've never felt anything quite like that. Was it, was it energy? Um, was it energy? Was it... Uh, cause like, up, uh, you know, in, in, in the Bigfoot community, there's a, there's a theory that these animals can give out. Um, it's like, it's like almost similar to EMF, like a big bombardment of EMF. You know, everybody has a different reaction to EMF, whether, you know, some people get headaches, some people get nauseated, some people get, you know, just a great amount of fear. So I was just kind of curious if, um. If you felt like you got bombarded by EMF or nauseous, or, you yeah. know, I, I don't think it was EMF because I've been like, I've been in places where it's like, just like crazy, right. crazy high EMF. And like, I've slept in places where there's like, okay, I don't know, transformers next to my head, you know? <laughs> and, uh, so I don't think it felt like that, but the thing that it felt like was if somebody is like staring at the back of your head, like, and they have, like, bad intentions or something. Okay. Like, yeah. I mean, like, people can feel this. Like, every, I think everybody can feel this. You can feel when somebody's, like, focused on you. And this was, like, focused on me with bad intentions. And there weren't any people around, like, because I, I had, I rode my bike around these trails, like, around this little area um, just to try to find a good place to camp, like, like, okay, where's a good flat spot and all this? So, I mean, I, like, canvassed this whole area and, like, did loops around it and all this. There were no people anywhere around there. 
And hmm. so, like, whatever it was, it just freaked me out so bad. And, maybe, um, maybe it just didn't allow the loud. The, it didn't like the loud motorcycle. Right? Yeah, that yeah. like I I tell people all the time. You know, get off my lawn. Yeah, yeah you know, because like <laughs> get off my lawn. You know, Bigfoots are just like people. There's like there's good Bigfoots, and then there's Bigfoots yeah. that, that are like assholes. Mm-hmm. And they yeah. don't they don't like people and they and they and they want them out of the area. So you didn't hear like any like growls or tree breaks no, or anything like that. I you know, I didn't have any other experience at that time. I've had um went out in the wilderness and stuff, I've had my guides and other spirits talking about Bigfoot and stuff because they're like, Oh, he he's into Bigfoot. And so they're talking about like, well, what's a Bigfoot? And <laughs> Somebody else be like, "Oh, there's a Bigfoot," and you know, I don't, I don't know, but I've, I've been in some places where there are, um, there are rumors or pretty strong rumors that there are Bigfoots in those areas, and they know, oh, it's a juvenile, and you know, oh, they're they're here for this period of time and all that stuff, and I've been in these spots and um, I've had. I've had um, EVPs talking about Bigfoots, and That's I've gotten the telepathic stuff. That's crazy. One of the places was East Seti Ranch. Um, it's oh, is it in Washington? I think it's in Washington, uh, on the border of Washington and Oregon. But it's a it's a place where there's like a ton of UFO activity, and they just have weird stuff that happens there. But they've got Bigfoots. They've got some Bigfoots that come onto the property. Nice. And so I stayed in this little yurt kind of thing. And, uh, you know, I'm just like, okay, what's going to happen tonight? Um, and I don't think anything happened. But the next morning, um, I I was listening to EVPs and stuff. And I think they were talking about um, <laughs> talking about Bigfoots. That's awesome. About, like, that is awesome. <laughs> them visiting in the crazy. night. Crazy. It's like, you know, okay. you know, once I was, I was doing Bigfoot stuff in Oklahoma and uh, at the time we didn't have video. We only had like digital recorders or like recorders. And I, I placed like a, like a digital recorder, like in a crook of a tree, like way in the woods. Yeah. And I was hoping to hear like, you know, some tree knocks or some house and stuff. But I ended up when, when, whenever we went back and listened to it, it was like a little girl said, mommy, where are you? Uh, I was getting the chills as you were telling the story <laughs> well, leading up to that. Like, I oh, remember you man. told me that one too, and I was like, uh, so. and I, go, well, I go, where was this at again? <laughs> like, there's there's got to be like people, right? And you're like, no, no, no. It was it was in it was in the Yakimichi Mountains in Oklahoma, mm-hmm. in Moyers, Oklahoma. So it's like really rural area. It's, think, Whenever we went there, when I was with you, did yeah. we, were, were we close by there? Yeah, it was. It wasn't too far away from there. Oh Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the more you know the more yeah. you know there's so, stuff i didn't tell you like, there's a rattlesnake in your backpack yeah i was gonna ask you brett do you do you run into snakes a lot or you know what? it's funny because i get into these areas and then all of a sudden not it's gonna, like I'm, I'm hiking around all by myself in these in these spots and you know i don't go like super far out um occasionally i'll do i do and then i'm like oh shit i i totally blew it i I shouldn't be this far away from my bike, you know, but I'll, I'll kind of, I'll try to stick to trails like regular trails and I won't do any cross country and I'll like take it slow and all this stuff. But every once in a while I'll be like, suddenly my, my spidey sense goes off and I'm like snakes. This is like a snake area. And I start talking. Okay. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm cruising around and I start going like, Oh, are, you know, I got to watch out for snakes. This seems like a major area for snakes. And so, like, I'll ask my guys. I'm like, you guys are going to tell me if there are any snakes. And then it's hilarious because in EVPs, they start talking about snakes. And they're like, oh, there's one uh, there's one over there, but you're you're fine. And um, These guys they, are characters. Before, <laughs> they're awesome. Like, everybody needs to, like... Pay attention to their guides. Yeah, yeah, because it sounds like everybody has one. Yeah, uh, but everybody's got one. I guess I'm like disconnected with mine. I guess I don't know. you gotta <laughs> ask. You gotta ask for them. Yeah, uh, we we all have free will, so you have to ask your guide to step in. Say, hey, you know, come in and say hi. You know, come into my dreams and tell me 
you know, say hello. I don't know if I want that. I'd like to. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <I laughs> that know. that also might be why you uh, don't see your guides because if you don't really want it, then they aren't going to be jumping in. But, but they're but they're always yeah. there, Brett. They're always there. I I think so. Okay. Like I was telling you, like whenever you did the, the show, the last it was in December, uh, I believe it was in 2020. Mm -hmm. uh 2021 i got really sick i got um i was i wasn't able to eat Uh, i couldn't hold any food down and then i went to the doctor and they found out i had uh had some cancer so they they removed like uh six inches of my uh, large intestine and i was i was in recovery from there and then while i was in i guess surgery i got some kind of bacteria i got this thing called guillain barre syndrome Jeez. And it, it it it's it's where a bacteria makes your immune system attack your nervous system, and so it slowly crept up. The the doctors didn't know what it, what it was. It, it crept up to my chest. I I coded for seven minutes, and wow. and they like they like brought me back. And then whenever <laughs> I came back, I uh, I was paralyzed from the neck down, and I had to I had to learn how to walk all over again. You know, you learn how to walk, how to learn how to talk. Uh, yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was, it was a crazy experience. I'll say that. So, I mean, I, I was just, it was, you know, one of those things that I, you know, I just kind of said, you know, I, cause I, it took me to a dark, to a dark spot and I was able to come out of it. And then, um, you know, I, I asked the doctors, I said, how long is it going to take me to walk? And they said, I don't know, two years, maybe, maybe two years. And I said, you know what? I'm going to do it less than that. I'm going to, I'm going to smash that. And I yeah. was I was walking in under five months. That's so, awesome. So I I busted my butt, and uh, but you know it was just one of those things, and uh, it, I don't know. It was just it was just mind changing. It just changed me so completely, like spiritually, mentally, physically. It, it just oh, changes you so sure. much. So I thought for a little bit. I said whenever I came back, I was going to see spirits. That's what I thought. I go, you know, I died. I came back. Maybe I'm going to see spirits or something. So mm-hmm. I was telling Stephen that I said, I might start seeing spirits. I don't know. So Yeah. No, no. Wow. Uh, no yeah. spirits? No, no, no spirits. No. Um, Do you have uh, some sort of crazy healing abilities or any anything you, ha- <laughs> well, anything, uh, you haven't tried yet? No, I haven't. It's just um, the only thing is that um, like whenever, whenever I started walking, like I couldn't feel from my knee down. But I yeah. could, but I could walk. I could still walk, but uh, I couldn't feel from my knee down. Now I can feel everything except my skin on my feet. I, I can I can I can feel my foot. I can feel I can feel my yeah. toes wiggling. I can feel pressure when I'm walking, but I can't. It's like like the skin is still kind of numb a little bit. Wow. But, but um, the doctor told me that I may not get it all back. So she said, you know, you may not get it all back. So, you know, be grateful that you can walk. I go, absolutely. So, mm-hmm. Dude, you're, that's amazing. Yeah. You're amazing. Yeah. It's it just, it just one of those things that, you know, because I thought, you know, that whenever I, I, you know, I passed and came back that I'd see spirits. But, I, you know, I guess I don't. Well, we didn't tell you. We didn't. Whenever you <sighs> came back, we didn't. We had the hard time. Like me and my other uncles were like, they were like, do not tell Robert what happened until he's ready. Cause I don't think, I don't think he needs to hear that. And I was like, I'm, that's fine. That's, uh, that's understandable. So I think there was a couple of times you asked me what happened and I was just like, you know, you're here, like <laughs> yeah. you're in the hospital. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, yeah I, I think I would change the subject real quick until we find, I think, I think you had an idea though. You, you already, yeah. you had an idea that something happened. Yeah, um, I wasn't. Wow. I wasn't sure because, like, I was. I was in a loop, Brett. I know for some reason, whenever I woke up from, because I think I was in a coma for two days, and I woke up, yeah. and, and I was in a loop. Like, I would, I would. This nurse would walk up and tell me, "Cause hey, I'm so and so. I'm going to take care of you tonight." And I had a ventilator on, so I couldn't really talk. And he said, "I I don't know charades, but I'll do the best I can to take care of you, Mister Dominguez, and blah blah blah." And then he would leave, and I'd fall asleep, and I wake up, and it was the same conversation. Huh. And, I, and I go, uh oh, I go, that's, that's, that kind of scared me. And then I could hear like the nurses at the nurses station talking about their weekend. And then I would fall asleep and I'd wake up and I would hear the same conversation. And I go, oh. I go, that is freaking me the heck out. So yeah, you're glitching. So this, that's not cool. That's, yeah, that's uh, scary. And then that, um, that was whenever I 
I had my f- first in a while seeing a spirit. Yeah. Uh, because we're in the ice, the, the ICU, right? The CCU. CCU. Yeah. And I would constantly go from the waiting room to that hallway and then go to your room would be on the left. And there was an empty room right next to yours. Right. You remember this? Yes, I do remember and, this. And uh, Brett, like I saw this room so many times I'd look in there and go, oh, nobody's in there. Like, you know, it's an empty room. Every time. I don't know why. It was like a routine. And then I, I went past it because I think this was whenever you, they were about to take your ventilator out. Okay. And I went to go check. Steve was already there. Uh, you know, he said he was going to watch and make sure they don't mess up. So I go I go, and I pass the room. And it's the first time I don't really fully look. But I look, like, I kind of gaze, and I see that it's the same empty bed. But the, the chair, is like, there's a guy, older guy, white guy, bald. And and, the, and one of those those gowns, the gowns, yeah. And he was just sitting there, and he looked so puzzled. Like, <laughs> and I, I, I was what? like, and I looked, and I looked away, and I, and I, you stopped, right? I stopped, and I go, "What the fuck did I just see?" And I looked back, and he was gone. Wow, gone. Wow. And I was like, I don't have time for this right now. I need to go pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> I need to go pay attention. I don't know what that was. I yeah. don't have time for it. Yeah, I you didn't. Know. You didn't tell me that. Whenever I was, like, I, I was still trying to. Pro- I was trying to process yeah. everything and that what was happening there. So, so exactly um, that whole process later. Yeah, I'll, I'll I process later. Too. I didn't. Even, I like. I didn't tell Blair until like I think whenever you went to the rehab. I was like, I think I saw a ghost. She was like, Wait, what? I was like, Yeah, wow. I think. I think I saw something, and it still gives me chills when I think about it or when yeah. I talk about it because it's like. I could clearly see he was puzzled. Right. He was not sure where he was. Where he was. He just looked like he was zoned out. And yeah. that terrified me because That's kinda sad though. You know, I don't know if this was a recent thing. I don't know if somebody coded before you got there. Right. And he was in that room and he was just like looking at the bed like what happened? You know, I know whenever I was in recovery in that room, I think there was at least like four code blues. Mm-hmm. Like um, I remember too. Yeah. So and that scared me because I think I was in the waiting room and I hear cold blue, and I'd quickly run to to, to, to your see room if and, I was and okay. nobody yeah. nobody was in your room and I was yeah. like, and I fell back because I was like I go oh thank God it's not him, but yeah. you know it was somebody else and yeah uh, that's um you know it's one of those things where it's it's crazy just seeing I I, I kind of wish I would have stopped really stopped and looked and really looked at what was I looking at, right. but I was so focused on going to you. Right. And I was like, Oh, it's, there's a guy in there. Wait, there's a guy in there. What the hell? Like uh, there, there wasn't a guy there yesterday. There wasn't a guy in mm-hmm. there. Like the 50 times that I came through here today. Wow. Crazy. Wow. Um, Just wow. somebody, somebody, uh, I don't know. I've been in like, <clears throat> I feel like hospitals are super haunted. I feel like oh, there's so much, yeah, so much going on there. And it might be that, you know, I mean, this is just me theorizing on this guy, but he might have been so medicated that, you know, he pa- passed. And yeah. he's still kind of like, am I, is this dreaming or is this, is this real? Because it doesn't seem real, but mm-hmm. it also doesn't seem like a dream. Yeah. And that's, you know? that's the sad part because, you know, he, from that brief two seconds that I saw him and it felt longer, but it was. Cause I wasn't walking that fast. I was like walking, like just right. kind of just casually strolling. Cause I, I would see Steve and I saw the room and I just happened to look real quick. And I was like, I don't even think Steve saw me go back to the room. Yeah. Cause he was like, he's like, I'm going to watch them take out the ventilator. And as soon as they started moving it, he goes like, I can't watch it. And like, he walked away. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, that's the sound. Like I was, I kept trying to theorize too. Like I go, did he, did he pass away in his sleep? Did, did, you know, right. cause he was just looking at the bed, like, Wow, like you know, I'm I'm, I'm, I am sure that he is okay. Yeah, um, I, I think from what I understand, um, you you've got your guides. Your guides are going to be there when you're when it's your time. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll probably have um, like angels and family will will all like kind of show up, and mm-hmm. they'll show up when it's time. Um, I've seen. I got to see one spirit, uh, maybe two, but one that like blew me away. One spirit like crossed into heaven. It was a spirit who was earthbound, all upset at 
um, losing their family. And I don't know the details about like how they lost their family Mm -hmm. or like what happened, but um, they were all upset and they stayed at this restaurant and they were like disgruntled and they, they like throw pans around and stuff at night. And it's because, you know, people aren't doing it right. They aren't doing it how it's supposed to be done. Mm. And he was just, like, super angry and super upset and all of this stuff. And, um, you know, I kind of I kind of just talked to him and said, like, it's okay. Like, it's okay. You can, you can go up. Like, you're, you're good. And, um, like, I went from feeling his pain and all of that stuff to, like, um, and I was crying, like I was crying to my wife <laughs> and we actually were sitting in a car and like one of my friends was like, Hey, can you, can you take care of the spirit in this, in this you know, restaurant I work in or whatever? And I just tuned in and dealt with all this stuff. And then suddenly like, um, like the white light portal opens up like a hallway of white light. And the joy and the, like, ecstasy pouring from this place, like, I immediately went to laughing and crying from the beauty of it. And so I see this spirit, like, go into this tunnel. And um, both sides of the tunnel are filled with, like, generations of his family. And they're looking out. And it was this, uh, it was this Mexican, Mexican dude. And it's (laughs) just these, like, like the, all this family just looking out and like, I couldn't, I couldn't function for like hours. Um, wow. like I, I would just start crying or laughing or whatever. And this was, this was me getting to look and see like over the shoulder, somebody going in, Yeah, you know, like not even getting close. And, um, uh, it was like profound, um, and amazing but my my guides basically were like well you're useless if you get overwhelmed like this because i get super emotional with this stuff yeah and so like they're like we can't show this to you like because you're you're useless you can't actually do this you know do this work or do this stuff if you can't function because you're you know you're in ecstasy and so um, I don't think anybody like, could. I don't think yeah, I was gonna yeah, say I don't think yeah. anybody could. And I, I, I got to see um, Archangel Michael. I wow. saw Archangel Michael, and I saw him. I could only see like it's it started like at his feet, like me looking at his feet and going up. And like by the time I was at his knees, I was like crying and couldn't focus and everything. And it was it was like seeing a like a marble statue. But it was huge, this huge statue. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was that was what I was told was that was Archangel Michael. I mean, and it was like, and it's like they're they're kind of like, yeah, you can't handle seeing this stuff or or feeling it to the full extent. So um, I've basically been dimmed with some of these things. What was what was the circumstances of you seeing the Archangel Michael? Um, I was. I think I was researching um, angels because I had I had started seeing angels and I had started seeing demons too. Hmm. Um, like, yeah, this is a whole whole other story that we could save for another time. But right. the demons showed up, and I was kind of like, "What the fuck is this?" Uh, can I cuss? I of course. Oh, yeah. Because I just it's, said it's unrestricted. I just said something else. Okay. But anyway, I was like, "What is this?" And my wife saw it too, and it was like telepathic. We could both see it. Um, and there were like, I think, two or three little demons, and we saw them. And basically, I, I was supposed to take care of it. This is what my guides were telling me, like, "Oh, take care of this." do it the way you do the, you know how to do it. And I don't know what they're talking about. You know, it's like, Oh, is this something from, you know, between lives or a past life or have I been trained somehow with this, like mm-hmm. while I sleep, 
So I go into a meditative state and I start dealing with it. And um, in dealing with this, angels show up. And so, like, my paradigm was like, are you serious? Like, demons are real? Like, that's, like, totally floored me. And then, like, right after that, I find out angels are real. You know, angels with the the wings, very, um, probably not not accurate Bible, <laughs> but, mm-hmm. you know, the, you know, when, when you're looking at the biblical kind of angel with the, you know, feathery wings and, right. you know, bright, bright light and aura and everything, you know, um, even dressed in armor with swords or whatever. It's like, yeah, I see these angels and it's just like, what? Like, this is real too. So I was, I was researching angels. Um, are they, are they, ta- know, are they taller than a normal person? Yeah. Yeah. Everyone I've seen has been taller and I've seen both the like, you know, sword and armor kind of angels. And then I've seen um, like the robed angels and Mm. I've seen them with wings and I'm unsure if I've seen them without wings. Wow. Um, That's, that's, that's super cool. I mean, because I would, I would, I would think it would not be like, a guy with big wings, I would just think it'd be super strong person or a lot of energy or something. Yeah. 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 I Um, I would always think of it as it's light. You can't, you can't make out the, uh, the face, the face, the, the body structure, but you still see like some sort of feel it or feel that you you can feel it. But when you're seeing it, it's like a light and and you can see there was like remnants of like wings beyond it. Mm. Um, that's how, I would think. Yeah. Uh, but we, seeing the whole thing, like, oh, that's, that's gotta be a little breathtaking and terrifying at the same time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's wild. And, um, <clears throat> I get to see this stuff on rare occasions. Um, and there are certain time, like certain periods of my life or whatever, when I've seen, I've seen these as other things too. Like I've seen them as like, it's like a pillar going from your floor to your ceiling, a pillar of light, mm. uh, you know, about maybe a foot and a half wide or something like that. I've seen this and I was like, I think that's an angel. Um, mm. wow. um, I've seen it almost like the same, same kind of thing, but it's more almost like a candle, like a tall candle, mm. um, you know, floor to ceiling, same kind of deal. And I've seen them um, where it's like, it seems like it's going through the ceiling um, and I can kind of see through the ceiling cause it's kind of transparent or something. Um, mm. And so like, these are, these are ways I've seen it. And all of this stuff is just kind of like, you have to go, yeah, Brett, like, you know, I believe Brett has thinks he's seen this and you know, who really knows? Cause all of this stuff, it's so hard to, it's so hard to actually, like believe or know to the core of your being until you've had the experience. Right. Like the, like seeing a ghost or even seeing a UFO or whatever, like it's really hard to take somebody else's uh, word for it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, yeah, so, it is. Um, so. But no, I mean, I feel like our own personal experiences are, are real. Yeah. Um, you know, just, oh, yeah. I, I, um, I don't know if you remember this, but uh, the last time we talked, I think we did this off air. Yeah, uh, I I told you that I was I was going through some things. Uh, how I lost my brother. I don't know if you remember that. Oh, I don't remember the details. Well, uh, you did. You did. We we asked you to do an impossible thing. Yeah, it was uh, it was after we had we had done the show. We stopped recording, mm-hmm. and you okay. and you and you did like a, a reading you, a reading with him. Uh, afterwards about so. my about my brother because uh i don't know if i told you the full details and if you don't remember it's okay like, yeah um but my brother was autistic and he um he got he was involved in a hit and run uh uh you know he yeah. got hit by an 18 wheeler and uh, and i had a hard time during this time i think i was going through some health stuff too i was um i had sleep apnea and what was happening was it was getting it was getting so bad that i was like my heart would be racing in the middle of the night because like my heart would literally, I would stop breathing Yeah, because uh, sleep apnea is a very dangerous thing. And, and I didn't really take care of it. I kept ignoring it and it got so bad to the point where 
mentally I wasn't I wasn't accepting his death and uh-huh. I was uh I was seeing him. I would wake up in the middle of the night and I would see him as how my stepfather described how they found him. And I was like, okay, this is not real. And there were times where I would close the bedroom door because it would be, he would be looking at me and that's how I would wake up. And it got to the point, right? This, this goes on, this goes on for about over like a year. I didn't tell anybody. I didn't tell my uncle. I didn't tell my wife. I just kept telling her, I go, please leave the door closed at night. And she was like, why? I was like, just please leave the door closed. Like, please. And it got to the point where I was not only just seeing him, I was hearing him. I was hearing him wheezing, gasping uh, for air. Yeah. And I was like, um, okay, this is getting kind of bad now. And uh, I didn't know what it was. I didn't know it was a demon. I didn't know what it was just. So I think my sleep, at, I was telling my therapist whenever I finally broke down and went to therapy, she said that, you know, the sleep apnea is, it's, you weren't, you weren't getting enough oxygen to your brain. So that, yeah. and then, you know, your mental capacity of, you know, not, you know, seeing, going to therapy, you were thinking, probably, you probably were, thinking about him a lot too. Thinking about him and you were dreaming about him and it just, it just showed Ma- up. Manifested. It manifested. You, you thought you saw him. You thought you heard him. It's what your brain was trying to tell you and let you know that, Hey, you need help. Uh, both, you know, sleep apnea wise and yeah. therapy wise. So at that time, uh, that's, I don't know if I told you that, but I, that's what was happening. I was like, Hey, you know, maybe if you can do a reading, uh, maybe I can get some closure. It, it didn't work. That's not your fault, but right. It, cause, it, cause it, I know yeah. normally you do it like a, a video one, mm-hmm. Brett, or you do it in person, right? Whenever you do yeah, something yeah. like that. So it was really, we were asking the impossible to, yeah. of you at that time. And you know, we, the, we're sorry. The only thing that uh, <laughs> I remember is that you saw like a red ball, a bouncing red ball. And, um, uh, you said you said you felt like happy, like like yeah. you were like you were feeling some type of happiness, but it wasn't from me. It was from something else. I was like, okay. Um, so yeah, no, I, I was just wanted to know if you remember that, and uh, yeah, and I wanted I wanted to like let you know that I'm okay. <laughs> okay, uh, I've, okay. I've, uh, it, it, yeah, it, going to therapy really helps uh, getting a better sleep with your sleep apnea machine. Yeah, it helped it helped me a lot. Um, I lost like, I think 65 pounds just by sleeping. Right. Yeah. Um, I remember you calling me and telling me about it when you finally broke down to called and told me and, yeah. and you asked me if I go, do you think it's paranormal? And I, I, I answered you. I said, I don't think it's paranormal. I think it's your guilt, mm-hmm. uh, not being there for him whenever he passed. Mm-hmm. So that mm-hmm. was, that was my impression. And I mean, that's yeah. what it was literally. Cause you know, whenever you're in, Whenever you get hit, whenever you get hurt, you know, you you look for people that looked out for you. Uh, yeah. Your father or your mom or someone you looked up to. I had always thought that he, you know, looked up to me. Yeah. Um, and there were many times where I, I've helped him and saved him many times where he ran out the door and I ran after him. Yeah. Um, you know, because he was autistic and he just, he just liked to run. Yeah. And going through, remember those, that field? And I got like I stepped on beer bottles and yeah. I had like huge blisters when I came back. Yeah, I do remember. And that. you're like, uh, yeah, that's gonna hurt. <laughs> yeah. That's gonna hurt when you pop it. I go, oh man. Um, but yeah. but it was my guilt. It was survivor's guilt. It was a lot of things. Um, and it was just yeah, it was, it was piled on. Yeah, it just kind of piled on. And uh, uh, the Lord was testing me that that uh, those two years because you know uh, you know my uncle he he got. You know, he pretty much flatlined for seven minutes, and that seven minutes felt like the day. And I was just like, "He's gone! Like I, I'm, I'm going through this again, all over again." And then he comes back, and then I'm so grateful. And then, like two months later, like I, I lose my best friend, and it was really, really testing me. And I think the whole thing about it was just me processing it in a healthy way that I, sh- I didn't do before. Uh, because yeah. with my brother, I didn't, I didn't, I just kept lingering it and not trying to get out of the funk and talk about it. All I knew is that, okay, I'm seeing him and I don't know if it's a demon or if it's, if it's something that's just trying to mess with me or if it's just my mind playing tricks on me. But whenever I was able to hear them, I knew something was wrong. 
I'm hearing him. I'm only I'm not only seeing him, but I hear him. And there yeah. are many nights where I got up and I look at him like I would be three feet away from him, and I could feel like just the hurt and anger. Like mm. I felt so much, and I would just slowly close the door on him, and then I would break down crying in the bathroom because I was like, I just. What if he's trying to tell me something? Right. What if he's trying to tell me something? But I can't face him like that. I can't. I yeah. can't face him like that. That's and, not the Victor I know. And then when you were going through that, we were going to talk to Brett mm-hmm. for the very first time. And you, I remember you saying, "Cause hey, do you think it'd be okay if I if I ask Brett?" I go, "Yeah, ask him. I mean, we can ask him after the, you know, when after." Yeah, because I was you. I was desperate. I wanted I wanted some type of closure. I was like, maybe he can tell me that it, that yeah, he's trying to reach you. Or he, he's he's he just wants to let you know he's fine. That's what I wanted to hear, but. In in a reality world, that's like yeah. movie stuff. Yeah. Uh, but in reality, it, that was not going to happen. I got a bouncing ball. <laughs> well, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of times with that kind of thing, like, um, that might be part of, like, part of the reading is like, oh, I'm not, like, I'm not connecting with him or or something like that. I mean, mm-hmm. um, and it, yeah, it sounds sounds like a cop out, but you no, know, sometimes no. there's sometimes. Like I've had, I've had um, people coming to me, and they they want to talk to their uncle so bad and everything, and it's like, you know, nope, it's not, it's not happening. And then I finally realize it's like they're really resistant to this. They don't like this. Like this is not the way they do it. And it's like, oh yeah, that's totally their personality. And it's like, yeah. And then we find out like they are, you know. They hated the idea of mediums when they were alive, and like all of this stuff is like it actually turns out that that is part of the reading, or that's yeah. part of mm-hmm. you know, part of the story. They like, yeah, they never would talk on the phone or some you know some weird thing like right, that. Right, they don't like and texting. So, um, I'm I usually, well, I I feel like. I feel like things happen for a reason mm-hmm. and him not showing up to me or not giving me more than just the red ball and the feeling. Mm-hmm. Um, you, re- that you, remember, been... you remember the color. I didn't say a red ball. I said a bouncing ball. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you, you know, oh, is it one you... of those, uh, <laughs> it's one of those like four square balls, like, or yeah. not four square, but like, like you would play uh, dodgeball with yeah, it, yeah, yeah, the the, the one that makes a, the sound eight sound eight. Boing, boing, boing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, eight or six inch, yeah. yeah. I, I well, you know, I, 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 I and the reason I'm bringing this up is I'm not like you know trying to be like you didn't help me. That's not what I'm no, trying right, to say. Right, um, right. If anything, um, he's all you know. He's autistic, and maybe you know when when autistic people pass, maybe they, they, they're able to talk. They're they're not still not able to talk or like, so he was able to give you just an image of a bouncing ball, meaning like he's playing. I took it as he's playing. And then you said you felt happiness, but it wasn't from me. And I was like, I took it as him saying he's playing and he's happy. Right. And I, I took that and I ran with it. Even if, if it's, that's not true. Or if that's not how I, we would perceive it, but that's how I was like, he's giving you two things, a bouncing ball and the happy. feeling of happiness. And right. I took that and I ran with it. And I, I because, because really he, he wasn't comfortable talking to everybody. I mean, he no. he wasn't comfortable around being everybody. So no. maybe in, in the spirit life, he was the same way. He's just mm-hmm. not comfortable uh, walking around and approaching people. Cause he was kind of distant. Mm-hmm. So, um, but I mean, he was close to us. Mm hmm. But, um, but I don't, I, think, I mean, go ahead, go ahead. I, I think like spiritually, he might be more, more advanced than any of us. Right. Um, right. And he might be an eloquent speaker and have all, you know, come off as the most intelligent person and everything. Um, and it might, it might've been that he had to present or he has to present a certain way for you to be able to really recognize him. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that's that's what I would. You, you know, I, te- I, mean, I, I I tell you a quick story, Brett. Whenever whenever he was when he was really little, <laughs> uh-huh. you know he he would like he would like to get out of the house and go look for Snickers, uh, Cheetos, Cheetos, and Sprites. And Sprites. 
And so we had to keep it in the house all the time. So he wouldn't leave the house. <laughs> so I would come home with like, you know, like three bars of Snickers and Steven would take him into the room cause I would hide him. So, you know, he wouldn't eat them up like right away. So I'd hide him. So I, 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 I went to the cereal box. I pulled the cereal bag out. I put the sneakers in the bottom of the, bo- of the box, put the cereal uh, bag back in, closed it, put it on top of the refrigerator. He came out, looked around, you know, and then he focused on the, on the refrigerator. He, pull, he pulled up a chair, got on that, and jumped in and got the, got the cereal box and started eating the Snickers. And, and you know, I think it, what it was is that he's – Victor was so advanced at everything else. Yeah. He and noticed where everything was. Everything was. And all if the, the cereal box was moved differently, he knew that you, someone messed with it, and he knew it was recent. Yeah. And that's why he did that. And, you know, because you, you probably couldn't have, like, the, the Apple Jacks or whatever it was, yeah. it was facing to where you could see it. But when you put it back, it was facing the other direction. Right, right. And he probably noticed that, and he was like... There's, there's something in there. Yeah. Get a chair. <laughs> and we'd look at each other like, how? How, how in the that? heck did he do this? Like, he, <laughs> he that was his superpower. Yeah. Is that he was able to, to MacGyver his way yeah. into he, finding snacks. He would just find snacks. Hyper everywhere. awareness. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, um, but no, I, I wanted to thank you on that. Um, I don't know how much, I don't know that that, that really... I don't, I don't know if you know that that really helped me in some sort of way to where, you know. You're, able, it, to, you're it, able to move on to I was able to step. move on and realize, okay, you know, I wasn't fully honest with him. I wasn't, I don't think I, I don't think I told you that I was seeing him. I, 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 I don't, I don't know at that time I haven't told we, you yet. We, did, oh, okay. we have to go back and listen yeah. to the episode. So. Um, but you didn't air it though. That's it, right. I did. It, it wasn't recorded. <laughs> That's right. Because you were saying like, hey, why don't you just. You must have known because you were like, "Don't let's not ask him on the. You don't want. I don't want you to do it on the episode. I don't want right. you to do it." And I was like, "Okay, that's fine. That's probably better because I might break down." Um, yeah, yeah. Some of that stuff is so. It, there's, it's there's so, so much. It's so emotional and and there's there's private information that comes out and stuff like that. So yeah, it's better to not do, not to do some of those readings on air. And and it's it's so sad because I think we talked about that. Uh, before I th- maybe before my stepdad passed away, right? Because my stepdad, he just, he, you know, he couldn't, he just couldn't, hold, he couldn't handle it. Uh, I think he he went on for about a year, and he just, yeah, he passed. He, he, he passed uh, with COVID. He had COVID, but he he beat it. But his heart wasn't strong enough because I think he had a, a heart attack, and it he just had a, it, a, a broken heart. Yeah, and then right? and, and, and I really think that he that was his cause of death was a broken heart because there was many times he talked to me and he was like, you know, I, I felt as a father, I didn't protect him, you know? And I was yeah. like, that's not, you know, I, I think I told him, I was like, I felt as a brother. I wasn't there. Yeah. You know, I wasn't there to lay down on the couch or in front of the door, like how I used to, that way he doesn't open the door that that's, that's on me. I got to live with that. And he was like, no, but you know, he was doing so well and I, I got comfortable and, and, and I thought he would, he stopped doing it. And yeah, it's, it was just one of those things. And, and, um, it was his time. It was, yeah, it was time. And it he, was hard to accept, uh, for a while. And, and I think the many, the many therapy sessions I had, I would force myself to talk about it until I got it all out. Um, and my therapist was like, that's great. I like, keep doing that. Like, I'm not, obviously I'm not telling you to, you know, don't talk about stuff, but that's, that's what therapy is. Right. Talk about that's so, um, thank you. Thank you, Brett, for, oh, you're for, welcome. for being that. And it sounds, sounds like he had such a tremendous impact on, on a lot of you guys. So. Yes. 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 That's, he, um, he, the, really awesome. the, 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 the best thing about it is that my wife got to meet him before he passed, and so did my kids. Okay. Um, so I think that's maybe he's their spirit guide. I don't know. So. Maybe, and I really hope so. Um, <laughs> so. But there's many times now, like I see Ricardo, and I see pictures of of Victor whenever he's yeah. uh, Ricardo's age. And I was like, it looks just like R- yeah. Ricardo now. <laughs> same shape of the head. Uh-huh. Same so. shape of the head and same attitude in yeah. a way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they love sweets too. So I was like, well, I, mean, I love sweets too. So. Yeah. I mean, well, well, Ricardo doesn't like Snickers. He doesn't like chocolate. Yeah. So never mind. Loves apple jacks. Uh-huh. So. 
But um, man, I think I yeah, you know cool. we we've gone uh, a minute and eighteen seconds. A minute and eighteen seconds. That's really like an hour and eighteen minutes, Brett. So. Yeah, Brent, I don't <laughs> know. If Brent yeah. knows that joke. No, he doesn't know that joke. Yeah. But um, Brett, numbers. I get it. <laughs> thank thank you so much for coming on, man. I am so. I mean, I'm not so nervous about this one. I was, I was super nervous the first time. Yeah, I was, I was too. Like, I was like, I was like a shivering little. I was, like, I was like, I've never, <laughs> I've never talked to a medium before. How do I? And I'm not, I don't know this guy. Like, I don't. I don't They're know. weird. Yeah, it's, it's, it's. But, you know, you know, it's funny because like you were on, you were on Crazy Cat Paranormal. Okay. And and you were talking to Cecilia. I don't know if you knew this about Cecilia, but she passed already. Oh no. Yeah, she passed in September of last year. So wow. uh, you were on her show. And you were talking about, you were talking about me on their show. And then uh-huh. she, she slacked me. I'm not slacked me. She messaged me and she says, Hey, uh, I just had Brett Carson's uh, haunted meeting on and he was talking about your show. <laughs> I, go, uh-huh. I go, really? I go, yeah, well, I'll reach out to him. I go, Hey, man, what's up? I, I remember I, I, I DM'd you on Twitter and I said, Hey, man, what's up? Do you want to come on my show? And you go, Yeah. <laughs> so, I was only talking about you on some one of the other people's so- shows. Yeah. <laughs> Because I think you were getting ready for her show, and you listened to my episode that she interviewed oh. me. Yeah, so oh, how cool! And so you goes, yeah, I was listening to you know Bigfoot Club. Oh, and that's right. So, so it's a small world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. I like it. But yes. um, you t- you tell those spirit guys to to really, really, you know, watch out for you, man. Because yeah, <laughs> you, yeah, I don't think yeah, you you made an impact on my life. Uh, and I always appreciate it, and I'd, I'd like, hopefully, one day we we meet, yeah, and uh, we can do another better reading. I don't know, <laughs> yeah, um, that'd be cool. <laughs> um, but no, seriously, like, yeah, the, you know, there's many times where Robert told me, hey, you need to watch a couple of his episodes. And I was like, okay, I'd like when I have time, I'll do it. And then after realizing, I go, oh yeah, this is this is uh, Brett Carson. Yeah, I spoke with him. He's got a lovely voice, a lovely <laughs> calm voice. He he is so meticulous with these angles. That he does, yeah. I've like, noticed. You know, I don't know if you, Brett, you, because I know you have like a like a GoPro like on a stick, right? Yeah. And then you have like a mount that's like recording you, recording yourself, mm-hmm. and it's like yeah. I, I love that. I wish more people would do that. Most people, oh, that's yeah. so great. Yeah, and yeah, it's, most people don't do that. And it's like, why. and then he does these angles, and I love wherever he goes. He just goes mm-hmm. and just finds places, little nooks and crannies across the counties and states and stuff. So I think it's so cool. So. Every time, like, like I was just saying, every time you post something, I put it on our 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 paranormal group constantly. Oh, how cool so, is that? Thank you, thank yeah. you. No problem. Yeah, um, everybody, go binge. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, how does how does how does our listeners find you on the internet, Brett? Uh, I would suggest go to my webpage, brettcarstens dot com, okay. and it's B R E T T two T's Brett. And last name Carstens, and it's like C A R S, so cars and T E N S, like tens. Right. Dot com. Um, and uh, I'm fairly active on Twitter, so you can send yeah, me. Yeah, you are. Anywhere. I know. I know you're like a sharks fan, right? You you like the sharks? The, the no, not the sharks. Oh, the I thought kings. I, no, the kings. That's the right, the kings. kings. The kings. The sharks are like a, a, an arch enemy of the kings. <laughs> Sorry, bro. <laughs> Jeez, yeah, I need to follow him on. Twitter. Are you trolling? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I watch you all the time. I mean, you, I mean, because like yeah, you, you, I mean, you, you comment on on my Twitter all the time, and I, I really appreciate it. So, yeah, I need so, to um, need to follow you on Twitter, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, you, you should. Um, um be my gaming channel. Twitter. Do do me a favor, Brett. Uh, send me all your links that you want because I, whenever I post the episode, I'll add all your links and please add add your wife's link on there too, if you don't mind. Okay. Okay. Because I I, I I love to post whatever she has to. Is, is she she's got books out, right? Uh yeah, she did. She's got the uh, How to Live with a Psychic. Oh, that's um, you. Does Does it have the, a big picture of you on on the front cover? No, it's got some um, <laughs> some free free picture that we we took. Okay, should have been you. Should have been Brad. Yeah, going like this, like. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know if we, I think we would sell less copies. Oh my come on! on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brett, thank you for uh, for coming on the second time, and I we would love to have you on for a third time. So. Yes, hey, that'd be great. So, um, thank you so much, um, Stephen. You have any shout outs? Uh, shout out to my lovely wife Blair, uh-huh. who's uh, holding it down, working at the office. 
Um, and uh, shout out to my boys. Yep. Ricardo Sh- and shout Sasha. out to Cassandra, Tony, uh, Caitlin, Courtney, uh, Candace, uh, Matt Knapp, mm-hmm. uh, Big Dog. Mm-hmm. So I <laughs> just wanted to do shout out to them. Matt, All right, everybody, say, say good night. <laughs> All right, good night. Oh, good night.